What's up guys, we are back with another video. This time I get to show you my bike. I'm very excited about this build. It took me a little bit longer than I expected. A lot of it being done while I was in Europe and now that I'm back home, I've been home for a little over a week, it's time to get a video on this thing. I'm so thrilled about this build. I think it turned out amazing. A lot of great sponsors stepped up to help me with this build and I could not be more thankful for all of them. So before I bore you guys with more talking, it's time to go check it out. So guys, like I was saying, new bike build. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of what product I use why I use it, and also what sponsors helped me out with this build. I'm super thankful for everyone that's been a part of this. So now I'm gonna show you my whole bike. All right, so we'll start with the front of the bike. For wheels, I use KSR wheels, uh, Han Hub, Bulldog spokes, DID Dirt Star rims. I've never had an issue with these wheels. I put them through hell and they always hold up and I hardly ever even have to tighten them. So huge fan of those wheels. So I prefer to use those on all of my bike. Then we'll move over to, I run a Galfer 270 Tsunami rotor with their, over, it's an oversized rotor compared to stock. Big fan of it. I used it even this past year with my last team for actually the last three years I've been using this, this same rotor and I love the feel of it. I think it works really well. Then we'll move up here to the suspension. I'm running Showa suspension. It is the stock fork that has been coated and then it's all Showa internals, so no third party has done the suspension, it's straight through Showa. Then I'll move to the extra triple clamps, um, it's the bronze triple clamps, and then we also have the PHDS bar mounts. Then we'll move up to the handlebars, I run Pro Taper handlebars with the Wyndham RM bend, and then also their race cut grip. Big fan of these, they're just tacky enough, just soft enough, that has a really good feel. And then also the waffle grip. I think that's what they call it, it's a waffle grip, just on the inside to save my thumbs. And then we'll move to the levers. I run an arc lever. Uh, I think it's got a little bit of a better adjustment with the pool and the way these things work with the hydraulic and also they fold out. I run that on the clutch and the front brake. I have never had a problem with them. Really, really enjoy them. I actually run a standard brake cable in the front. Um, the other ones are just a little bit too aggressive. I like more of a plush feel. So that's something that I went with on the front brake. I'm running the Motion Pro throttle system. Uh, definitely like the feeling of that and the adjustability that we have with that. I think it works really, really well. So we'll start moving to the back. Um, I'm running a 1.8 cap. Inside my radiators and underneath my 1.8 cap is actually engine ice. Uh, I've been with engine ice since I was probably five years old never used anything else he has actually been one of the biggest supporters of mine that i've had in my racing career and the longest sponsor i think i've ever had so we'll go to the radiators so my radiators are braced as you can see braced um and then also oversized so radiators are actually really big talking to icw who actually made these radiators for me uh the bike runs 15 degrees cooler yeah and the hot summer days down here in florida you definitely need to run a little bit cooler and then just any you know precaution you can take with bracing it, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead and brace your, your radiators. Because I use the Pro Circuit cooling hoses. I think those are really trick. They're a little bit thicker than stock. I also change out the hose clamps to something a little bit stronger. Um, I've never had any good luck with the stock ones, so I switched those out to something a little bit stronger. So moving down to the engine, I actually run a Boysen supercooler. That helps quite a bit with just a bigger propeller in there to let the bike run a little bit cooler. Moving over to the clutch system, it is a full recluse core manual clutch, basket hub, uh, clutch springs, you name it, that's inside there. I also run the recluse slave cylinder. That's been a huge help and a lot better feel with the clutch. I highly recommend you guys putting that on your motorcycle. And then just next to it, you can see the REC MX oil filter cover. Uh, I think it looks absolutely amazing. The green looks really cool. It pops really well. Also with REC MX, I run their ignition uh, cover bolts. 
They look really cool. They're all billet matching the other side. I think they look absolutely amazing on this bike. I also run on top their coolant uh, screw. It's stronger, it's billet than the stock one. The stock one actually will melt if it gets too hot. So highly suggest you swapping that out for a billet one. So then we'll stay on this side of the bike. I run a pro circuit bendable shifter. It helps keep the dirt out of the front. I think it's a lot better than the stock one. It looks cooler too. So I run one of those. Moto tape grip tape. I run the rubber uh, factory grip tape. Amazing. It lasts quite a bit longer than anything else I've ever used. Gives a great feel and does not tear your boots up at all. Uh, for graphics, I run MGX. They do a full design for me. Austin over there has been a huge supporter of, of mine and he has made some amazing graphics and I've noticed that they actually last quite a bit longer than anything else I've ever used. So yeah, I stick with MGX. He's been great to work with. I think the bike looks absolutely amazing with it as well. It's super clean, nothing crazy. Really big fan of those graphics. We're on a Guts seat cover and also their lightweight seat foam. Uh, I really enjoy this cover. It's something that I noticed that I squeeze really hard on the bike. This is pretty much the only seat cover that I've ever had that does not wear out. I can't put holes in it. It just it doesn't it just doesn't happen. This is an amazing seat cover. The foam is super lightweight. It stays firm so your seat doesn't turn into a pillow. So it gives that good feel the whole time. And then inside the air box, I run a twin air air filter with the high flow uh, filter cage and the high flow filter. And I also run a twin air oil filter on the other side behind the RECMX uh, oil filter cover. For my engine mounts, I run the Works Chassis Labs engine mounts, uh, titanium. I have noticed that these have made the bike feel absolutely unreal. They are probably the best engine mounts you can get on the market. By probably, I mean they are the best engine mounts you can get on the market. Uh, they give the bike such an amazing feel, really helps with the turning, really helps with the traction, and just an all, the rigid feel that you get out of the stock ones is completely gone. I highly recommend you putting these on your bike. And also with Works Chassis Labs, I run their brake mounts. They're titanium, so they will just last quite a bit longer than the, the stock ones that come on the bike. They're a little bit lighter as well. Uh, big fan of these things. And then I also run their new linkage, as you can see, the linkage and the knuckle. A little bit longer than stock, gives the bike a way better feel in the rear, helps the back track quite a bit. Highly recommend that. Anything Works Chassis Labs, I recommend. Those guys over there have been absolutely unreal in making the absolute best parts that you can put on a motorcycle. For the foot pegs, I am running the Raptor uh, Titanium Kawasaki foot pegs. A little bit of a bigger platform. Uh, I think they look also really cool, but they're also quite a bit more grippy than the stock ones. So yeah, definitely run the Raptor Titanium foot pegs. So now we'll work our way back to the back of the bike. For chain guides and rollers, I run TM Designs. Quite a bit stronger than the stock ones. If you guys ride Kawasaki's, you know that you'll run through this top one in about two days of riding. Uh, I run also their bottom slider. Their kit is amazing for the Kawasaki. I would highly recommend you guys running that. It's the factory edition two is what I run. I run that on the front and the rear and also their rollers on the bottom and the top as you can see up in there. That is something that I will always run on my Kawasaki. And then we'll go into chains and sprockets. I run a Sunstar chain with Sunstar sprockets front and rear. I'm running a 14 in the front, a 51 in the rear. Really uh, have found that that works the best with extending the, the swing arm quite a bit out, but also giving it a little bit more grunt out of the corners and lengthening the bike as much as you can and, and also being able to run a gear a little bit longer than just running you know, your standard 13 front and 49 rear. So then we'll go back to the other side of the bike. Like I said, in the, as in the front, I'm running Showa uh, suspension in-house. Uh, I'm running a 18 millimeter shaft with an A-kit clevis. Uh, that's been the absolute best um, combination that I have found that works on this bike. I will continue to run it for as long as I possibly can and they want to support me with suspension. Um, yeah, great suspension over there. For the exhaust, I run the Pro Circuit RC4 header with a carbon end tie six exhaust. Then we'll go into my brakes. Um, I mean, we actually have a slight sight glass delete done by Moto Whips. All of my Cerakote on my bike is actually done by Moto Whips. So the rear brake, the, the whole rear brake, the uh, engine cases, even the temp sensor, uh, I don't know what you wanna call that thing, but that right there, my front brakes, my clutch, all of that's done 
all by Moto Whips. Uh, been a big fan of his for a long time, Justin over there, so I was super excited to have this stuff done by him. And then connected to the Cerakoted rear brakes, I have a Galfer rear uh, brake line. Now for the rear axle, I have Pro Circuit axle blocks. That way that I can keep this screw just a little bit further forward and not have it sticking all the way out, but still run my axle further back than normal. And then going to the brake disc, I actually run the stock rear uh, brake disc. It's a 250. Um, talking to Michael Lindsay and also the guys at Cowie, I should go down to the 240. I just haven't got my hands on one yet. The 250 is very, very, very touchy. I'm not the biggest fan of that, and that's one of the reasons why I also keep the braided line on there, just because I'm on it a little bit more, and I don't want that brake line to expand and then I lose my brake. Just like the front, I'm running KSR wheels with Han Hub, Bulldog spokes, uh, Dirt Star STX rims. Like I said, never had an issue with these wheels, and I will continue to use them as long as I can. I also have the Dunlop MX33 on the rear. Even like I was saying in, uh, at the beginning, even if the track is super hard packed, I still prefer this tire than any other tire that Dunlop makes. Um, it lasts quite a bit longer than you would think, but it just has such an amazing feel that I just can't get out of any other tire. And then for the plastic, I am running Sykra plastic all throughout the bike. Uh, I think it looks great, but it's also really durable. It's the best thing that I could get that's just like OEM that lasts a long time, but also works amazing and fits great. So yeah, I run all Sykra plastic. I run the Sykra skid plate as well. I drill holes out just for, you know, little holes, not anything too big, but little holes just to keep a little bit more air going to the engine. Um, their skid plate is quite a bit bigger than normal. So I try to keep as much hot air out of there as possible. Um, yeah, so I drill little holes on the, this side and also this side, just to keep a little bit more air rolling in there. For an ECU, I am running Git. Dan Truman has been a huge supporter of mine, so I make sure I run Git products on all of my bikes. Gives it quite a bit more pep. The bike runs amazing. So yeah, all Git products throughout this whole entire bike for electronics. And then last but not least, the, one of the biggest supporters of mine for the last two years riding for the last team I was on was Skazi MX. He does my engines. He also works uh, hand in hand with Racetech and Wiseco. We have been testing pistons with this bike trying to make the best thing that we can possibly give and also use that for consumers that will buy their engines through or get their engines done through Skazi or Racetech. So we have come up with a really great piston design in there. So just know what we have come up with and what you're probably getting through those guys is something I've done a lot of testing with. So I'm really, really, really happy with that. Throughout my whole bike, I have Works Connection product. Uh, they have been amazing uh, to work with in the past. They have actually engraved my number in the top caps, which is one of the coolest things I think I've ever had on a motorcycle. With Works Connection, I run their oil fill cap, rear brake cap. I actually even purchased my ARC levers. I should have mentioned that. Through Works Connection, they sell that on their site. And I am also running the Works Connection hour meter. As you can see, it says 0.1 of an hour. This bike actually has 6.7 hours on it, but we have a new piston in the test, so always a new hour meter when we do new testing. And for fuel, I don't have any stickers on this thing. I just don't simply have any. I run BP Pro 6 HT. It gets really hot down here in Florida, so we make sure that we run fuel that'll run at a high temp. Another little thing that we have learned is the subframes do crack um, unless you don't have a rubber mounted uh, pipe. We do have the rubber mounted pipe, but we actually had this thing welded up just as a safety precaution, just to keep anything from happening. Just, we don't like problems, so. We had that welded up. I think it turned out great. Any of your local fab shops can get it done. Um, I highly recommend you guys doing that just as a safety precaution. And last but not least, I wanna give a really big shout out to Kissimmee Motorsports in Kawasaki. Norm Terry over at Kissimmee Motorsports has been unbelievable to me. He has been one of the biggest supporters I think I've ever had in my racing career. He has stepped up huge for me. I'm so thankful for all the support that he gives me he has really made me feel like family and I could not be more thankful for Norm and everyone over at Kissimmee Motorsports. And that's gonna do it, me showing you my Kissimmee Motorsports Kawasaki 2019 KX450. This build has been one of the most fun builds I've ever had and I'd be biased if I said it wasn't my absolute favorite. Um, I chose the Kawasaki. This is what I wanted to build. This is kind of my dream motorcycle. Uh, spent a lot of money building this thing. Also a lot of great sponsors stepped in to help me out with it. But this is a full blown 
privateer racing motorcycle. This is a close to the factory bike as you're gonna get. Could not be more thankful for it. I just wanted to basically show you guys what product I'm running, why I'm running it, but also help you guys with your builds. If you can build a Kawasaki 450, but you're kind of questioning some things, this is what I've built. So yeah, I'm super thankful for this build. Could not be happier with how it turned out. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. If you have any questions about these motorcycles, don't be afraid to leave a comment and I will definitely do my best to answer that question with any knowledge that I have. If not, I will ask someone and then respond to you. But yeah, that's, uh, that's my motorcycle. I'm super happy about this build. Like I keep saying, it's, I'm just, I'm thrilled. It, this is one of the coolest bikes I think I've ever had in my life. Yeah, leave a comment, subscribe, like, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys around. Thank you.